Alice the Little Welsh Engine. Dedicated to all people who love steam engines and to the memory of all those who worked in the state quarries of Wales. used to spend all day happily juggling around a slate quarry in North Wales. High up in the mountain, she would pull wagons of slate that would be sent down to the valley below. Every, early every morning, the quarry men would make the long climb up the mountain. In winter, they would sometimes have to thaw out their frozen tools. But in the summer, there were flowers, rabbits and wild goats. Now that had all gone, the quarry man had stopped coming to the to quarry the slate and Alice had, to, had sat for many years alone in her shed. As the years went by, Alice slowly became sad and rusty. Then, one day, some strange men came to the shed. Now I'll be able to go out into the sunshine again, she thought. But she watched in horror as they removed her whistle and wheels, brass fittings and cylinders. Then they left and never returned. Alice missed the men that worked in the quarry. She didn't like the loud explosions that made to loosen the slate, but their laughter and songs made the work fun. The wild goats and rabbits that lived on the mountain all tried to cheer her up. Alone with the animals, Alice once again heard the sound of people. This time, smiling men came to the shed with tools and ropes. They heaved Alice onto a trolley and pushed her out into the daylight. They carried on pushing her right up to the edge of one of the great slopes that led to the very bottom of the quarry. No, don't push me over the edge! She cried, but Alice's voice was hoarse and rusty, and the men didn't seem to hear. The strangers attached a big chain to Alice, and slowly they started to lower the little engine down the mountainside. As they lowered her backwards down to the lake hundreds of feet below, Alice cried out to the animals, Look at me! Look at me! I'm going down to the valley. Lower and lower she went. Until finally the little engine was there. Thank you. She croaked in her rusty voice. 
Alice was loaded onto a lorry and started the long journey to Preston in Lancashire. But more bits were taken away. They even removed her boiler. Alice waited patiently and just when she started to think nothing would ever happen. Once again men loaded onto her lorry and she went back to Wales. Soon Alice arrived at a little station near Barla. There was a beautiful lake and lots of sheep. And as the men started to unload her, Alice heard familiar voices. Hello! Boomed the R engines. They were old friends from the quarry. It was Maid Marian and Holy War. Still rusty and worn, Alice smiled back. Alice was so happy to be there with her friends. So of her missing parts being brought to the station and everyone was very kind and friendly, although they were very busy with the R engines. Then one day, Maid Marian said, Alice, they've sold you. Later that day, a very jolly man came to the station. Well, I think you've heard a line off. He said, beaming, I'm Mr. Scott, your new owner, and I'm going to sort you out. Others helped too. There was Mr. Black, the engineer who worked on the engines, and kind Mrs. Hyde, who sold books on the station platform to help pay for Alice's parts. They set to work on Alice, cleaning away the rust and grime. Then her pistons, pipes, Wheels and chimney were all repaired, refitted and oiled. Woohoo! cried out Alice, her new, newly oiled voice. Alice still needed more parts, a new boiler and a new coat of paint. Other engines started to arrive at Bala, and after a while there wasn't enough room for Alice. Well, you must come and live in my garden, shed until we... A four can afford to finish you, said Mr. Scott. So Alice sat in the shed at the bottom of the garden, waiting and hoping. Mr. Scott and his dog would visit every day for tea and talk to her so she never got lonely. Maybe soon, Mr. Scott would say. Then, one day, he said, time for you to go now. You're going to the old schoolhouse and this time you're going on the road. But I haven't got a boiler, said Alice, and I look so drab and grey. We're going to tow you, he laughed. Look, here comes the tractor. They hitched up Alice behind a tractor and off she went, making a tremendous noise as her heavy wheels rolled along, leaving huge marks behind her. People ran out of their houses, dogs barked and children cheered to see Alice rumble down the road. Through the village, past shops, cars and buses she went. Alice felt so embarrassed. Everywhere she looked there were villagers watching and waving as she went by. When Alice arrived at the old schoolhouse, she could see it wasn't a school at all. It had been changed into a workshop. We've had a boiler made especially for you, said Mr. Scott. But you'll have to promise to work very hard for it once we've made you better. Alice happily agreed and soon the boiler was fitted snugly under her tank. Now we're going to Boston Lodge, the oldest railway workshop in Britain, said Mr. Scott. Once she got there, the last dents and rusty bits were removed, the final pieces were repaired, her brasswork was polished and Alice was given a new coat of paint. At long last, Alice was finished. She was so happy. Now she was ready to have her fire lit to make the steam that would take her on her first journey on the railway. 
It was evening time when Alice set off out of the yard. Toot, toot, she cried. Look at me, I'm a quarry engine. As the sun sank low in the sky, she chuffed along the line, up into the mountains, all the way to Blind Alphys Diniog. Alice knew she was ready to go to work again, and so very soon she set off with Mr. Scott to the Leighton and Buzzard Railway in England to work alongside other steam engines. Will they laugh at me because I'm small? she asked. No, said Mr. Scott, laughing and shaking his head. When Alice arrived at Leighton Buzzard, the other engines looked very grand. They were excited about something, and some gave her a cheery whistle. Alice tooted back, which amused them, but she wasn't allowed to go up the railway with them. The other engines left, and crowds of people gathered around. Suddenly, Mr. Scott said, Right, Alice, now it's your turn. As they left, the shed she could see all the people gathered round and they were smiling and cheering look Alice I've come to see you said Mr Scott the other engines started tooting their whistles Mr Scott made a speech and suddenly Mrs Hyde appeared and popped a bottle of champagne and poured it over her name plate and sour tank. Everyone clapped and cheered and Alice was as happy as a little engine could be.